The resurrection was the most powerful event that God used to show his power in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. But it's interesting to ask ourselves, what role did Christ play in his resurrection? I remember uh, when one of my high school teachers was correcting the notion that Christ was raised. And she said, no, the Lord arose, he wasn't raised. And I remember reading, even in the version that we used in our, in our um, class at that time, that no, I'm pretty sure that it says that he was raised in a few places. I think she was probably thinking of the, the song, He Arose. In any case, the Bible does say that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead a verb that's very frequently used to describe the resurrection of Christ is agerthe. And we're going to study the forms of agerthe in this lesson because it is aorist and passive. Uh, it comes from the verb agero, and it denotes the act of being raised. And that we know by looking at the tense formative the. This form of the verb is used in a variety of places in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John and also in Romans. And the conclusion is that Christ was raised by his Father. In 1 Corinthians, there's another uh, interesting verb that's used to describe how Jesus will raise the people, the believers that belong to him. It says, in, the moment, in, the, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And here the form is, another form of agero, it's agerthesontai, which illustrates another form of a verb that we're going to study, the future passive form, in this lesson. It has a tense formative that's similar to the aorist passive. It has the theta, eta, sigma there towards the middle, and then it takes the middle passive primary endings. Agerthesontai, will be or they will be raised. The aorist tense formative then for the passive voice we're going to see is theta, eta, and the future is going to be theta, eta, sigma, the and theis, respectively. The passive voice in the aorist and the future share similarities. In English, uh, the way we would form simple past action, which is the equivalent of the aorist tense in Greek, would be the simple past form of is, which would be was, plus the past participle. So was raised would be an example. And the future, well, we would use the future form of is, which is will be or shall be, plus the past participle. Will be raised. This is how we would form these grammatical structures, these tenses in English. So let's look at some details about the formation. For the aorist, the passive tense formative is theta, eta. And what's interesting about these aorist forms, and we're going to look at all the forms in a minute, is that they actually take an active verbal ending. So that's a little different. What, what, what is it then about these verbs that's going to inform us that it's passive? It'll be the tense formative more than anything because their endings are actually going to be active verbal endings. Um, there's a number of aorist type verbs that do this where their voice will be passive but they actually take when we later study participles we'll see that they take an active morpheme tense uh, participle morpheme and these are going to take an active verbal ending so if you think about our secondary endings we've got our active and we've got our middle passive the aorist passive actually take active verbal endings that's a little weird so it'll take some getting used to and here's how the first singular would form all past tenses in Greek are going to take the augment, and then they'll take the aorist passive tense stem, which in this case will just be lou. We like to use the verb luo as our example verb. The tense formative would be theta, eta. We already talked about that. And here is the first singular active secondary ending. So eluthane would mean I was loosed. And again, it's going to be the tense formative that tells us that it's passive because the ending is active. The future will take the passive tense formative theta, eta, sigma. And this is how it forms. It will form from the aorist passive tense stem. The aorist and future passive are going to share the same tense stem. A lot of times the stem is going to look just like it does in the lexical form or in the present tense, the way we memorize it. Other times it will be a little different. But these, these two tenses are going to invoice, they share the same stem. So we've got the stem, then we have the tense formative theta, eta, sigma. And then the connecting vowel in this case would be omicron. 
and the ending, it's going to take the primary middle passive verbal endings. So luthesomai would mean I will be loosed. Let's take a look at all of the forms then. The future passive are, are um, characterized by the tense formative face plus the connecting vowel plus the uh, middle passive primary endings. So the first singular would be luthesomai, which means I will be loosed. Luthese, there's a contraction there. Technically the ending is psi, but it contracts to just be eta with a yoda subscript. Luthesai means you will be loosed. Luthesetai, he, she, or it will be loosed. Luthesamitha, we will be loosed. Luthesesthe, you will be loosed. And Luthesamtai would be they will be loosed. So that gives us a review not only of the tense formatives but also of the middle passive primary verbal endings. And then the aorist passive is going to have the augment, it'll have the stem, the theta eta tense formative, and then the secondary active endings. Now the translation is passive, the forms of these verbs are passive, but they take active secondary endings. A little strange. But here's the forms and here's the translation. We have eluthane, I was loosed, Eluthes, you were loosed. Eluthe, he was loosed. Eluthemen, you were loosed. Eluthete, you were loosed. And Eluthesan, they were loosed. You can, if you look at the first singular form and compare it with the third plural form, in some of the aorist examples uh, or the aorist forms, they share the same form. That's not so uh, with the aorist passive. Usually the a uh, third plural aorist passive ending is going to be san instead of just the new. Another uh, thing that's interesting about these forms is that we found with the first aorist, the, for instance, elusa, in the first singular it actually does not take a new. And in the third singular, often it will, it'll be a movable new. Um, and th that's, that distinguishes this aorist passive from the first aorist active because here in the first singular it actually will take the new. So now that we're trying to categorize all these different aorist forms, just remember that the first aorist active elusa in the first singular doesn't take a new. But here in the aorist passive we go back to the normal endings, the normal active endings, and yes it will take a new in the first singular. So what we're looking at here is there's the, the future passive and aorist passive share some similarities. They share the same tense stem. Their, their uh, tense formative is similar. The future passive is going to take face, and the aorist passive is going to take the. And the aorist will always have an augment and a secondary tense ending.